15 years ago, Rotterdam, the Netherlands. It's raining and I'm waiting for my interview at a consumer goods company. It's my seventh round interview and I am nervous because this is a job, this is my first job and I really want it. So when the VP HR calls me to tell me that I'm having a conversation with a psychologist, she comforts me by saying, it's just going to be a conversation to get to know you. And no, you don't need to prepare anything. So I take a couple of deep breaths, and with wet hair, I enter the room. The psychologist is already waiting for me. <laughs> he doesn't smile, tells me to sit down, and hands me a piece of paper. This is a case study about a marmalade factory in Poland. Tell me in 15 minutes how you're going to increase the sales. I feel my heart beating and my hands start sweating. I just finished a master degree in a Dutch hospital on children with a genetic disease. PNL? PNL. Was that some kind of new medicine? I had never done any volume or price analysis, let alone been involved in sales strategies. I look at the psychologist. Does he see that I'm struggling? After 15 minutes, when I start explaining my solutions to the best of my ability, his attitude doesn't change. At that moment, my mind goes crazy. I already see myself stuck at my parents' place while all my friends make fabulous careers. So when I tell him this, when I tell him that I feel that I'm totally in the wrong direction, he, for the first time, looks at me with a smile. Yes, you are commercially as green as grass, and this is not going to work for us. Goodbye. <laughs> Back on the street, I can't help but cry. I feel like a complete loser. Was this worth years of education? Did I feel that I got a good chance to prove my motivation and learning capabilities? Would I ever find a job again? I'm obviously here today and I survived. But that experience 15 years ago completely changed my view on human decision making. I was confronted with human bias. I had seen a career that I felt so passionate about seem stolen from me. And to be completely frank and open, I had been biased too. I thought this was a great opportunity and a great company but what had I actually known about the people behind that nice brand name? Not that much. Now let's do a little experiment here in the audience. You're obviously seated next to nice people. Have a good look around you and pinpoint the person next to you who you think will be working in banking, finance, accountancy. Don't be shy. So why do you think that she's in accounting? Is it because she's wearing glasses? <laughs> well, that's very human, isn't it? But can be flawed too. Now, if you dare, raise your hand for those of you that are actually working in finance. Oh, that's a pretty different result, isn't it? What if I? had given this presentation today with pink hair. Would you have observed me differently? Probably yes. This is how human bias happens. It's very human, but it's wrong. And it's a problem, a big problem. Who of you in the audience are currently looking for a job or interested in a career switch? Raise your hands. Well, I was talking to a friend last week who is an executive in the food industry. Rina, he said, I want to change industry. I want to do something new. 
I'm sure that my skill set can be valuable somewhere else. But then he angrily continued, the headhunters are only offering me jobs in food. It seems that I can't get that sticker off my forehead. And I could feel his frustration. Because every day we're being judged, you're being judged, often on merits that are far stretched from reality. Every day, young people are screened out for jobs because they don't have that exact university on their resume or that exact major, or for reasons far worse than these. In society, we often talk about diversity and the importance of it. But in our daily lives, we take shortcuts in decision making, especially in HR. But let's step into the shoes of the hiring manager for a moment. What tools does he or she actually have to find the right candidate? How does she know who to look for in the first place? Well, the uncomfortable truth is that we don't exactly know. Or as a partner from a leading strategy firm put it, we put all these resources in the recruitment process. We do CV screening, case studies, face-to-face -face interviews, assessment centers. We invite a great group of diverse leaders just to believe that we can take out this little bit of human bias in the process. But the reality is we still sometimes hire the wrong people. Now, what does this exactly mean for us? Data talks. 40% of the companies that are leading their industry today will go extinct in the next 15 years. Let that sink in for a moment. So 40% of the companies leading their industry today will go extinct in the next 15 years. And the most important reason for that? Human bias is the biggest impediment for growth. Another fact point. We know that in the United States, 4% of the jobs goes unfilled because of a skills mismatch. Now, if we take that number and we apply that globally, that means that 200 million jobs go unfilled every year. Or to visualize for you, that means two and a half times the population of Germany. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time for us to look for new ways to identify the right candidate for the right job. It is time for us to get rid of human bias, and it is time for us to embrace robots to help us make better decisions for ourselves, for our companies, and for society. And today, I will tell you how. But let me first explain to you what artificial intelligence or robots actually are. Artificial intelligence is like a computer brain. And like a human brain, it can read, listen, interpret data to come to conclusions. The difference between the computer brain and the human brain is that the computer brain can process data in orders of magnitude larger than a human brain possibly can. Much more data, much faster, without getting tired or being biased. From our research, we see that language, the way we speak, has a very high correlation with what we do, our behaviors. The beauty of language is that it's subconsciously produced in our brains, so it can be seen as a unique fingerprint of who we are. Imagine the iceberg. We can see the 10% above the water, but that what is behind, under the water, we don't know how big or beautiful that particular piece is. Now, that is exactly what artificial intelligence can do. It can reveal the 90% under the water that we can't possibly see by looking at someone or listening to someone. Front-running companies in China today are applying this technology to analyze people's language and predict who fits their company or job best. At a cosmetics company here in China, recruiters were working through the night 
to screen thousands of resumes for a handful of positions. We feel that we're missing out on great people, their recruitment director said. We look for their university ranking, their major, whether they did an internship with our competitors. It's all we have until we meet them and we can't possibly meet them all. It's all they had until they started to apply artificial intelligence to identify the right hire. And when they embraced artificial intelligence, this is how they did it. They replaced a CV screening process and telephone interviews with a digital interview. A robot to select and screen candidates. I hear you thinking, a robot? A machine selecting candidates? Yes, and we're not talking 2050 here. This already happened two years ago. The company interviewed tens of thousands of candidates through their mobile phone, asking them questions that they would normally ask in a face-to-face -face interview. What makes you a great leader? How do you get people to work together? What is your motivation to come and work for us? And the beauty of it was that all these candidates could share their own experiences and answers and ideas in their own unique language and wording. Now, the algorithms would take in these answers and compare them to everything that they've read and learned over time as a benchmark. You have to imagine this. Great leaders talk differently than not so great leaders. Engineers use different language than commercial people do. The computer is able to identify our expressions and the words related to those to our likely behaviors and personality traits. It takes us humans a lifetime to do this. And then still, our judgment is depending on how we feel. Whether we are tired, had a fight with our husbands that morning, or are having our period. I have not yet seen a computer having those issues. <laughs> so I hear you thinking, and was it better? Did it lead to more diverse hiring? Were these people more motivated? One third of the candidates selected by the machine came from different backgrounds than in previous years. These candidates would have been screened out by a human selection process. Following these candidates throughout the first year of their employment, hiring managers indicated that they performed better than average. Fewer candidates left their job, which was seen as an indicator for motivation. Now, what about time? You remember me being in my seventh round interview? This time, the computers instantly ranked candidates, which gave HR the opportunity to give faster feedback to the candidate and save time in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, exciting times are ahead of us. Let me paint the picture of the future for you. Job seekers, this is coming your way. Imagine, after a hard day of work, one of the many, you take Subway Line 10 back home, and while cruising through the city, your HR bot starts talking to you. How was your day? And while you chat along, the bot asks, what, do you, what are you excited about? What kind of job would you actually like? And based on your answers, your facial expressions, your tone of voice, the HR bot starts working. And when you arrive back home and you put the key in your apartment door, your mobile phone has already received three job offers, perfectly matching your skills and motivation. Buy bad job, welcome future. HR and hiring managers, this is coming your way. Imagine your talent bot creates blueprints of successful behaviors in your organization, analyzing your employees' language on a daily basis. It will perfectly indicate who will be great leaders, great salespeople, who will be compliant or more of a risk taker. And every day, the algorithms will screen thousands of potential candidates, identifying who might be a great fit to your company. Artificial intelligence will help us 
to only spend time on the right candidates. Robots are coming. And I believe they're not scary or impersonal, but exactly the opposite. Artificial intelligence will help us to reveal meaningful things about ourselves and others. Artificial intelligence will help us to make better decisions based on information we do not have today. Now, critics will say, you know, robots are not ready. They will say the technology is early stage. But let me remind you that the methods we use today are far from perfect. We have an opportunity to prepare for a better world. We are at a crossroad. You are at a crossroad, and we have an important decision to make. Do we stick to our old habits? Do we stick to old methods with the same bad results? Or do we go for change, for innovation, for more fairness? If you say yes, we need you to be bold. We need you to step out of your comfort zone, and we need you to experiment. But the upward will be huge. I am sure that when our kids, with all their different talents, enter the job market, that they will be looked upon without any sort of bias. That it doesn't matter anymore what family we were born in or what education we finalized, like it did for me 50 years ago. But that artificial intelligence will help us to find our better paths. That artificial intelligence will lead to more equality at last. Thank you.